suspended or probation? No, 12 months to serve five days balance suspended. I'm sorry. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes, bye -bye. All right. Are we ready on Boston? Um, yes, Your Honor. Let me get the file. And then, Your Honor, before I get that file, I do have an announcement on um, one of the motions to seal, specifically Ponder. Mm -hmm. The state is going to agree to that one. Okay, thank you. So Ponder right. will be granted. Yes, and I'm doing some more research on Washington, his two cases. So just a few yeah, more I minutes. think those were the two that we, you know, were looking at. All right, yeah. so we're ready on Boston. Stay, um, is the defense ready? Uh, yes, Judge. And one second, y'all. Let me get my file for that one. You can proceed. All right. So, our Boston, this is uh, 2022 CR 01949. Anthony Edward Boston Jr. is before the court on criminal trespass. The state has filed a motion to revoke bond. Um, and uh, the Mr. Boston is present and represented by the law firm of Lister Holt and Dennis. Mr. Um, Owen Lynch is present on behalf of Mr. Boston and the state is represented by um, uh, attorney uh, AS, ASG Jermaine Hagler. Um, and we're ready to go forward at this time. Yes, Your Honor. Um, officer. Officer Green, are you on? Okay, one second. Thank you. Um, Officer Green, can you please raise your right hand? Can you use okay. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, to help you, God? I do. Thank you. And Officer Green, can you please um state your first and last name for the record? Uh, my name is Officer Brandon Green. Mm -hmm. And can you please spell your first and last name for the record? Yeah, first name Brandon B R A N D O N, last name Green G R E E N. And how are you employed? I'm currently employed with Clayton County Police Department, um, assigned to the division, uh, uniform division. Okay. And how long have you been employed with the Clayton County Police Department? Five years. Thank you. And one second, Your Honor. No objection. All right. So the motion motion to revoke bond on Boston will be withdrawn at this time. And um, Mr. Green, I just remind you. I'm um, sorry, Your Honor, but I disagree with that. Like, y'all keep allowing this to happen. He oh, violated oh, oh, the oh, oh, bond oh. because he, he, he came in contact Hold with me on. and took my child. She Miss Benz, I want to unmute you, but the problem is when you were in court, I remember telling you that there were certain things that you needed to do that you have not done. If you believe that a crime was committed and he interfered with custody of your child, you need to file a police report and ask for a warrant. Or you can go to the superior court if you all have an agreement about custody and visitation. There is no agreement, and he violated the conditions of the bond. I am suing y'all. I am suing y'all. He has contacted me and threatened me several times, and you keep allowing this man to walk. My son is a part of me. He has no custody in the state of Georgia at all. At all. Defect emailed y'all and told y'all they did not give him custody of that child. They've been looking for him and he has not complied in giving an address to where the child even is. 
Nobody is following the law. And you are the judge that set the law. I am I a victim and you are allowing I... my abuser to keep my child and continue to abuse me emotionally and mentally. It's unfair and it's unjust. Ms. Benz, courtroom 304, Ms. Hagler, we're going into a breakout room. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Um, Ms. Benz, when I send you the invitation to the breakout room, click on it and come into the breakout room. I'm leaving. I'm going to my attorney's office right now. I have nothing else to say to this court. Okay, well, Ms. Benz, I'm going to ask you to take the certain steps. Um, Ms. Nixon, you, you asked me to take the certain steps, and when I went and did the things that you told me to do, the when I went down to the police headquarters, that lady came from behind that desk and said that you said the judge order in the system said that he had custody, that the, the defense told you he had custody of that child. Then, two weeks later, I don't, when... I, I didn't say anything about custody. I don't know anything about custody, so I know I didn't say that. There's nothing in the computer that says that. All right. Um, breakout room, Mr. Um, Lynch. Yes, Your Honor. I'm joining now. <clears throat> so this is the motion for um, to revoke mine on case 2022-CR-01949, Anthony Edward Boston, Jr. Um, Mr. Boston currently has a criminal trespass. Um, the parties are ready to go forward. Previously, the state had announced that it was going to withdraw the motion, but after a conversation with all parties, the um, state has, just, um, has decided to proceed. The court has taken judicial notice of May 13, 2022. Magistrate Court Judge Charity uh, Bridgewater issued an order for bond in the case ordering that Mr. Um, Boston have no contact with the um, named vict alleged victim in this case, Cassie Benz, and also that he not co um, commit any additional um, any additional um, uh, offenses. So at this time, the state is ready to go forward. Um, they've called Officer Brandon Green. Yes. Officer Green, you've been sworn and you're ready to go forward with um, testimony at this time. All righty, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and were you employed with the Clinton County Police Department on um, November the 29th of 2020? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And are you post-certified and credentialed? I am. And are all of your credentials up to date? Yes, ma'am. And were you post certified and credentialed on that date? Yes, ma'am. And do you have arrest powers? Yes, ma'am. And do you have a pow powers to obtain warrants? Yes, ma'am. And did you have the power to obtain um, a warrant on that day? Yes, ma'am. And were you working in your official capacity on that day as well? Yes, ma'am. I was. Okay. Um, and were you, did you, were you dispatched to 335 Upper Riverdale Road, Southeast Georgia, 30236? Yes, I was. And what was the nature of that call? I responded to that location at the Chuck E. Cheese establishment in reference to a domestic disturbance. Um, do you know what was specifically said regarding the domestic disturbance? Uh, yes, uh... Miss Benz was having a birthday party for her and Mr. Anthony's child that they share together. Uh, I made contact with her. She advised that uh, they got into an argument about Mr. Anthony uh, bringing his girlfriend to the to the party against her wishes. So they stepped outside to where she then stated that he started begin, um, becoming irritated and irate and knocked, knocked the birthday cake out of her hand and then proceeded to shove her on the ground or she scraped her elbows before he hopped in the car and drove off. Okay. Um, and do you see the defendant in this case today? Uh, yes, ma'am. 
believe this too. And can you just identify what article of clothing he's wearing? Uh, if I can get the screen to large up. What's the gentleman standing in the courtroom right there behind his attorney? Okay. And what color is he wearing? Uh, I'll make this screen bigger. It's a collar shirt. It's hard for me to make out the color. It's a light colored collar shirt. Okay. Your Honor, the record reflects that Officer Green has identified defendant for this motion to revoke bond hearing. Record shall reflect that. Thank you. Um, during your investigation, um, you said you spoke with um, Ms. Cassie Benz. Is she the victim in this case? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, when you spoke with her, describe her demeanor. How was her demeanor when you spoke with her on that day? Uh, she was upset. Um, she appeared to be in like an emotional distress state. Mm -hmm. and, um, she had the bruises and marks on her elbow. Okay. Um, did she indicate to you how she received those bruises and marks on her elbow? Yes, yeah, she advised that she received them from Mr. Anthony when they had stepped outside to where things went from a verbal argument to a physical altercation where he had shoved her on the ground. And when you arrived on the scene, was the defendant there? Uh, no, he had already left the scene. Okay. Um, were there any other witnesses to the scene that you spoke with on that day? Uh, no, there, there was no witnesses once because they had stepped outside away from the party. Okay. And how did you conclude your investigation? Um, by determining Mr. Anthony as the primary aggressor, <laughs> and then I went on to obtain warrants for family violence better. Did you obtain any other warrants on that day? Uh, just the one for the battery. Okay. Any other warrants besides that one on that day that you obtained for the defendant? No, I only took out the battery warrant. Okay. And um, and why did you obtain the warrant for for um for the battery family violence? Uh, because of the physical altercation where physical contact was made and uh, she had received the visible injuries on her elbows. Okay. Um, um, and at some point, was the defendant arrested on your warrants? On your warrant? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. I believe at that point he was arrested on the warrant. Okay. Um, Your Honor, for the questions for Officer Green. Thank you, ma'am. Proceed. Yes. Um, Officer Green, could you just um, tell the court the date that you responded to the charge? Um, November 29th of 2020. Okay. Um, and so you responded and you spoke to Ms. Benz, is that correct? Correct. And you learned that there was a party going on for her son that she had with um, my client, Mr. Boston. Is that correct? Correct. And so you had knowledge that there was at least several people in attendance at that party, correct? Correct. And you could have gone into the party and um, talked to additional witnesses to verify Ms. Benz's claims, is that correct? Uh, there was no witnesses outside to witness the incident. You didn't speak to anybody at the party. Um, well, let me ask you this. Did you ask anyone at the party um, who was there first, my client, Mr. Boston or Mr. Benz? Did you verify that? Did I verify what now? Did you uh, verify who arrived to the party first, my client or Ms. Benz? Uh, I believe she was there first. And that's just based on what she told you, isn't that correct? Correct. You could have verified though that, though, with by talking to any witness at the party, isn't that correct? If they wish to talk to me. In the course, of, when you're investigating um, a incident, you have the opportunity to speak to people who are present, and you did not do that in this case, correct? Yeah, we can't force people to talk to us. I understand. Ms. Benz told you that the altercation started when um, <clears throat> she, 
she saw um, Mr. Boston's new girlfriend. Is that correct? You lost it. What now? Miss Benz told you that she was upset because of Mr. Boston's girlfriend being present at the party. Isn't that correct? correct? Yeah, that's what the verbal argument started at. Did, did you speak to the girlfriend? They were gone. Okay. Um, you verified the girlfriend was gone? No, she wasn't involved in the crime. How do you know? Because she advised me that it was Mr. Anthony that assaulted her. So again, Ms. It's them two out there. So essentially, all the information you have about what happened comes from Ms. Benz, isn't that correct? Hello? Hey, were you able to make contact? I turned it off. I don't know what happened. Um, Ms. Benz, <laughs> please. Hello, whoever's talking. Mute, please. Everybody mute, unless I'm talking to you or you're involved in this hearing. Thank you. All right, go back to um, Officer Green. I'm sorry, Mr. Um, Lynch, repeat your question. I, I don't I don't believe I have any further questions. Everyone on the oh, my goodness. If I have to say it one more time, I'm going to remove you from the hearing and you won't be able to get back in. So if you are not the person I am speaking to or involved in this hearing, mute your device. Keep it muted. All right. Continue. Judge, I, I, um, I do not have any further questions for this officer. All right. Um, re any redirect? Not for Officer Green, Your Honor. All right. Does the state have additional witnesses to present? Your Honor, this time I decided to call um, Ms. Cassie Benz, please. All right. Ms. Benz, remember you are testifying in a court of law. Please answer the questions asked. Okay. Ms. Benz, if you can please unmute yourself and turn your camera on. Thank you. All right. Ms. Benz, um, sit down. Are you sitting? I am. Okay. Raise your right hand for me. You solemnly swear or affirm any testimony you give in this matter will be true. Yes. All right. You can um, put your hand down. Um, so you're before the court. Um, as a witness for the state um, in this matter, Ms. Hagler has some questions for you. Mr. Lynch will also have some questions for you. Um, and Ms. Hagler, your witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Benz, I would like to draw your attention to um, November 29th of 2020. Um, do you remember that day? Yes, it's my son's birthday. Okay. And please tell the court what happened on that day. On that day, I had a party for my son at Chuck E. Cheese. Um, Mr. Boston bought the girlfriend to the party who we already had a conversation on not having her around my son because of the dynamic of the situation. The girlfriend was presented as the best friend and they were sleeping around with each other. And then once we separated and the altercation happened, she presented herself as the girlfriend. And it was taunting. She, it was a taunting situation where they were nitpicking at me, like, hi, I'm here, hi, regardless of what you say. Um, so when we were at the Chuck E. Cheese, I came in with the cake. We were running a little behind, and I came in with the cake, and we were setting the table up. And Mr. Boston's girlfriend had my son in her hands playing basketball. Okay. Um, and how how old was your son turning that day? Uh, two. Okay. Okay. Um, and then what happened next? You said that um, the defendant's girlfriend had your son in his hands. Uh, what happened after that? I asked Mr. Boston, could we step outside to speak? Mm -hmm. Everybody left out. We grabbed the cake. Um, everybody left out the door. And there were no other people there. It was just me and my kids and Mr. Boston and his girlfriend and her children. And as we were outside speaking, um, Mr. Boston got upset because of the things that I was saying. And he told me not to step towards him and his girlfriend. The girlfriend started arguing with me. And as I was talking, Mr. Boston knocked the cake out of my hand and he shoved me on the ground. And they got in the car, he grabbed my son and they left. And so when the defendant shoved you to the ground, um, did you just say any injuries? Yes, I scraped my elbows both of my elbows on the ground. 
Okay. And what did you do next? I called the police. Okay. And then after you called the police, what did you do next after that? Um, the manager from Chuck E. Cheese came outside and she was like, I saw the whole situation. She's like, I actually called Jackson the police here, as sir. well. Um, so, so Thank you. Um, when the, at, at some point the police arrived. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yes, you have to say yes or no, Ms. Vance, because the, yes, the when the, po the police arrived on the scene. Okay. And did you explain to the police officer what happened? Yes, I explained to the police officers what happened. My daughters also explained to the police officers what took place in front of them. They were crying historically. This is not the first incident of him putting his hands on me in front of my kids. A person can say what they want out their mouth. You can't get upset and put your hands on a person because of their words. And um, prior to this incident, um, was there another incident between you and the defendant? Um, yes, I had a home in Riverdale, out of town home. Mr. Boston was living with me in my home and my four children. I'm going to change that. Well, Your Honor, this is re re relevant as it goes to um, the the motion to revoke bond and the fact that the defendant did violate um, the order. She referring to the, the criminal trespass case? Yes, which happened before this case. Okay. okay. All right, go ahead. Me and my children were home watching TV. Me and Mr. Boston, had, um, we were in a disagreement and I asked him to leave, to move out of my home. Mr. Boston came to my home about... I don't know what time it was. It was late. I got a knock on the door. He was banging on my door. He was drunk. I said, no, you're not coming in tonight. You need to come back when you're sober. Mr. Boston got upset because I wouldn't allow him in my home. He bust out my, my windows in my living room, came through my window, and jumped on me. I'm, I'm going to object again. Judge. She's not referring to the criminal trespass case. She's referring to another case that happened previously, the, the bond Condition. That's what he got the tr criminal trespass and charge for because he came to my property and he did not live there and he busted out my windows and attacked me. It's All right. So separate case, Judge. I'm Go sorry. Ahead. She's referring to a completely separate case that Mr. Boston pled no low contendere to, which is not the case that we're here about today. Oh, you're talking about the case in Miss uh, Vance. Miss Vance, let the let the attorneys work this part out. Okay. I'm not understanding what he's saying. Well, you don't need to because this is something I need to decide between the attorneys. She is not I need you to be quiet right now. Judge. Okay. Mr. Benz, Mr. Lynch, what's going Ms. on now? Ms. Benz is not referencing the criminal trespass case. As you heard her talking about Mr. Boston jumping on her, that is not alleged in the criminal trespass case that we're here about. She's referring to a prior case that has been disposed and bond is not relevant. To that prior case. Yes, it is. That case has Miss Benz, stop. Certain things that we're discussing are legal matters. There are matters of law, not what your opinion is. I got to decide those. Now, you have made several statements that I've let you get away with, but I'm done. You have alleged that the defects has sent me a letter or called me. I have had no contact with defects. And let me just tell you, only time I have anything having to do with children is if a crime has been committed against a child that is a misdemeanor offense. DFACS has not contacted me in this case. I have no knowledge of any relationship or no or or or, or um, the fact that your child may or may not be with Mr. Boston. I have no knowledge of that. I am not the judge who would receive that information. So when you keep saying that DFACS has told you, DFACS has told me nothing. They've never contacted me. They've never sent me anything. I've never communicated th with them. So when I tell you that there are legal matters that you may not understand pertaining to this case, and I'm trying to parse it out and explain as we go, but what I'm telling you is you have an idea about what's going on and how we've wronged you. And I'm telling you, I have no clue about what you're talking about because I'm not the judge that would even get that contact, okay? It's not part of this case. Particular things that go on with the status of a child, visitation with a child, custody of a child, all of those belong to the Superior Court, which is on the fourth floor. They have exclusive jurisdiction over certain matters, which means 
only a superior court judge can deal with them or a magistrate court judge can deal with them if an offense is brought before the magistrate prior to being transferred to superior court. That's it. I'm in the middle. So that stuff that you keep telling about, I have the, I'm keeping you from your child or I'm not doing enough. I don't have the ability to do that. That's superior court or magistrate court. Okay. So when you start talking about what is or isn't happening for the purposes of what I have to decide today, let the attorneys present the information. Let me decide any arguments that may have. And when you're ready to speak again, I'll let you know. Okay. All right. Now, Mr. Lynch, you're saying that this is a different issue than the one that where a bond was issued. So if we're talking about a closed case. She's referencing a closed case. The state alleged in 2022 CR 01949, the case at which the state is trying to revoke the bond for that my client committed the offense of criminal trespass. There is no reference to any physical contact. There is an allegation that two holes were placed in a door at Mr. Boston's residence, not at Ms. Benz's residence. This She's referring to a totally separate case and whether or not that's relevant, I just want the court to be clear what what. OK, what was the date of the case that Miss Benz is referring to, Miss Hagler? Um, that was going to be my question. Um, Miss Benz, what case are you referring to when you said that he jumped on you? Because I'm, I'm not referring to that case. I'm referring to another case. But what was the date? I'm sorry. So many people keep calling my phone. Um, this was in 2019 and the home we shared was not Mr. Boston's home. That was our home where all our children lived. Okay. And Mr. Boston attacked me in that home as well and destroyed my prayer. Hold on. Okay. So Ms. Benz. So now Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, Lynch, what you're saying is that was an, uh, that was a case that has since been, um, that has since been resolved by a no low plea. Correct. And as far as the 2019 case, I would ask you, Your Honor, not to take that into consideration. Um, first of all, I don't believe that a NOLA plea is supposed to be used in this manner. But either way, it's not relevant to the bond because that case has been closed. He has entered a plea. It's disposed of. Now, what she just referenced, um, I believe she was starting to allude to the case that we are, that bond is um, was issued and that the state is trying to revoke his bond on the criminal trespass case, which allegedly occurred in May of 2020. All right. So, Ms. Benz, can we direct you to the case um, that um, I, you said, Ms. Hagler, it happened at Mr. Boston's home? No, I did not say that. But but you're right, Judge. Um, I do want to direct. Um, yeah, Ms. please Benz direct to her to the particular <laughs> offense that you're talking about. So, yes, Ms. Benz, listen very carefully to what she's asking you, because she in, in order for either side to make their case, we have to be very specific about what events we're talking about, okay? So when she's directing you, listen, don't just say everything that's ever happened, because I'm sure you and Mr. Boston have quite a long history, but there's some specific things that the court um, has to hear. And so it's better if you listen and answer the question that she asks you specifically, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. All right, Ms. Taylor. Yes, ma'am. And so, um, Ms. Benz, I do want to pick up with you mentioned the prayer room. Talk about that incident that occurred on May 7th of 2020. Um, yes, Mr. Boston had been drinking that night, that day. Um, he was really intoxicated. And what we were arguing about, I cannot recall. Um, I was walking up the stairs and I had said something to him um, that he didn't like. And when I said that Mr. Boston, Mr. Boston struck me in the hallway. We started fighting in the hallway. And um, he, after we, we were fighting in the hallway, Mr. Boston proceeded to go downstairs into our den area, into a room that I turned into my prayer room where I have... Um, my, my prayer area where I, I, I pray and I have certain things in, in that room. Um, and he went down there and destroyed the room. He flipped over all the bookcases that I had, all my uh, ancestors' pictures. He broke them. He broke the vessels uh, that I received, that I, the way I practice my religion. He broke everything in that room. He destroyed it. Um, when the police got there, he had left. 
Um, was there anything else destroyed in, in your um, in the home on that day? Yes, he put two holes in the wall from us physically fighting. Okay. Um, at some point, did you um, call the police on that incident? Yes, I called the police. Okay. Um, one second, Your Honor. And did you record or annotate any other damages in that incident on that day? Yes, I have pictures of the damages. And can you please specify what the pictures are of? Yes, the pictures of the holes in the wall in the prayer room, the damages to the prayer room. Um, thank you, Your Honor, for the question at this time for Ms. Benz. Cross-examination, Mr. Um, Lynch. Yes, Judge. Um, so you mentioned, uh, Ms. Benz, you and Mr. Boston's children that you have together. Isn't it true that you only have one child together? Yes, we have one biological child together, but me and Mr. Boston was uh, together since 2015. Okay. And um, the address where this um, criminal trespass that you just mentioned, that was 8260 Holly Drive in Jonesboro, correct? Yes, that's on my ID. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, how much was the rent at that location? Um, our rent was... Objection relevance. She claimed that she, that she lived at the location. I'm a resident at the home, and it's a valid... Resident. As long as I receive mail there, I'm a resident of that home. I don't have to pay a bill there as long as I receive mail there, sir. That's... Okay. okay. So just to clarify, um, you... Mr. Boston paid all the rent and allowed you and your four, three children to live there for free. No, he did not pay all the rent. Me and Mr. Boston went in on bills together. Okay. Um, so on the incident where he allegedly put holes in the wall, um, you said that he jumped on you in that incident? Yes, sir. Um, you wrote a sworn statement in that uh, incident in the police report. Isn't that correct? Yes, sir. And in that sworn statement, you didn't make any mention of him making any physical contact with you whatsoever. Isn't that correct? Can you read the sworn statement, sir? I sure can. Um, at the date, top, it says May 7th, 2020, or 2020 time 742, name Cassie Benz, Cassie Bria Danae Benz. Starting from the beginning, Anthony Boston Jr. and I got into a verbal disagreement about the children um, coloring all over the uh, over the ways walls while I was in the bathroom doing my hair. The argument led to Anthony Boston Jr. snapping, punching the walls, and destroying my prayer room. He crushed my spiritual tool, which is called an igun uh, pot, as well as my Anthony. altar I built for my ancestors, being very violent in front of my kids. I called 911, and he fled the scene. Why is there no mention of physical contact? Because... When Mr. Boston came up the hallway, I was in the restroom doing my hair. He got upset because our son that we shared together, and at the time, my three-year-old daughter, they were coloring, and they colored on the wall. So he got upset and started snapping and talking to the kids crazy, and I told him not to speak to the children like that. And when I said what I said to him, he got upset, and he mushed me into the wall. That's how the door hit the wall and put the hole in the door in the wall why didn't you include that in your statement i did and that's if you have the officer they had it recorded you can pull the recording up the video from the uh officer's ca the, uh camera yeah, you, are, you are aware that the officer does have a body cam recording right mm -hmm. okay no no mm -hmm. you have to say yes or no miss smith um i am aware now i want to move on to the 2020 November 29th, 2020 allegation that you mentioned that happened at the Chuck E. Cheese. Isn't it true that you found out that this party was going on while the party was already going on? And no, sir. Boston was already there. Isn't that true? That is not true. 
you said you arrived late to the party in your earlier testimony. I set up the party and asked him to bring my child, to drop my child off at his party. He brought the girlfriend and her three children who were not allowed to be around me because she kept telling him my child was autistic and my son is not autistic. She don't even want my son at his house, at her house. My son can't even go to her house when he's there. Ms. She Benz, doesn't put Ms. me Benz, or, or Ms. my Benz, Ms. Benz. You're not answering the questions he's asking. I'm just saying, he, 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 he's trying. No, 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 not, no, not, no, not just saying. I need to know specific. Oh, I set the party. Make... I set the party up. Okay. Did you pay for the party? I paid for my children to play. I put uh, money on their cards for them to play at the Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. Who made, who called and said, hey, can I reserve a party room? Do you, is that the way it works at Chuck E. Cheese or do you just go? You could just go and if they have a table available, you can, you know, grab the table, order the pizza, you know, set a little table up if you want to. Or you can do a birthday party package where they set a big table and an area up for you. Unfortunately, at that time, I could not afford that. OK, so you all just were going to go there and celebrate once you got there. Yes, ma'am. OK. Um, all right. Go ahead, Mr. Lynch. So, Ms. Benz, when you arrived. Mr. Boston was already present at the Chuck E. Cheese, isn't that correct? Yes, Mr. Boston was there. I mean, Mr. Boston was there. And you knew that he was there, correct? No. You you said you were upset because he was there with the girlfriend that you didn't know. So you No, we know her, but we knew her as the best friend. Mm -hmm. They were sleeping behind sleeping together behind my back in my home. So it's your testimony today that you didn't know that Mr. Boston was at the party at the Chuck E. Cheese's? I didn't know the girlfriend or him was there when I arrived. No. You didn't? You knew he was coming. Yes. And he was expected to bring your child. He, the child was expected to be dropped off. Not okay. him, not the girlfriend, just the child. Okay, but when he came, when was the first time you knew that he was there and that the girlfriend were there. When I came in, I set my table up. And when I turned, Mr. Boston and the girlfriend was already in the corner with my son. Okay. But my son was supposed to be dropped off to me. Okay, so when you said he was supposed to be dropped off to you, was so was Miss, were you supposed to get there, Mr. Boston was going to call you and then bring your son to you? Yes. So when I got there, someone was supposed to bring a mirror to the location, to the so party. When you say someone, who was that? Either his mom, his sister, because we weren't supposed to be in contact with each other. Okay. So did his mom come to the party? Nobody came. No. So it was just Mr. Ben, I mean, Mr. Boston and the girlfriend. Yes. And her children. Yes. And at the time, you said y'all weren't supposed to be in contact. Were you aware that there was a no contact provision? I was not aware of the no contact provision. I was just aware that from the previous situation that, you know, me and him, we don't do good with trying to figure things out between each other. And for my safety, the kid's safety and his safety, let's just try to find somebody else to communicate through. All right. And these arrangements, did you make them by phone or text message? Um, by phone. Okay. So you had spoken to Mr. Um, Mr. Boston. Mm -hmm. Don't. Yes or no? Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. So you spoke to Mr. Boston and y'all agreed that he, he, your son would arrive at the party. Yes. What time was your son supposed to arrive at the party? I can't remember exactly what time. I can't recall the time. Okay, was it day? Was it evening? Uh, it was in the uh, it was probably about three o'clock. I'm gonna say about probably two, three o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. And how many people were you expecting at this party? Um, uh, my sister, my two of my sisters. Uh, my sister was going to bring her stepkids, her three stepkids, and I had a friend that was coming with her daughter as well. And, and had they arrived by the time that Mr. Um, Boston was there? Um, no. When I arrived, I had texted everybody and told them I was there, and everybody was en route. We wasn't even there five minutes before I asked him, can, I, can we step outside and talk? Um, and the girlfriend came outside, too. 
to talk to. And that's when the situation escalated. All right. Mr. Lynch, continue. So um, it's your testimony that your sisters talked to the police. You testified to that, correct? No. Oh, you didn't? We didn't say anything about the sister talk to the police. The police just told no, you. She, the, the testimony was that she talked to the police and a minor child talked to the police, her mm -hmm. daughter. You called 911 on at least two occasions. Isn't this correct? Didn't you call 911 on at least two occasions? I'm not understanding what you're asking. Did you call 911 um, to report your allegations that happened at the Chuck E. Cheese? Yes, I called 911. And isn't it true that at the time you called 911, you were following Mr. Boston's car in your car? Isn't no, that sir. So if the 911 recording, the 911 recording does not have the 911 operator telling you not to follow Mr. Boston, that's your testimony? I don't recall that, sir. So you, so. And if I did, and if I did, it was because your court system has failed several times to protect me and my children from him assaulting me. So, so I wanted to make sure that they had a tag number or something to be able to serve Mr. Ju Mr. Boston so that I can receive justice for a person not knowing how to control his anger and have self-control over himself. I can say whatever out my mouth. I can say whatever out my mouth. All right, if Vance, I don't put my hands on you, don't Ms. put Vance. your hands on me. Ms. Vince, you're being non-responsive, which means that you're not an answering the question. I just answered that was his asked. question. Yeah, so, but then he went into this rant about people putting their hands on you. He asked you whether you followed the car or not. All right, Mr. Um, Mr. Lynch, continue. So at first you said you didn't follow the car, you didn't remember, but now you're explaining that you followed the car to try to get a tag number. Why did you make a false statement to the court just prior to, to, to the first question? I said, I'm sorry, you know, this case happened in 2020. It's 2024, four years down the line. Um, my knowledge of each detail of how the situation and what happened and took place there, sir, is fuzzy. Okay. And let me ask you this. You mentioned um, controlling anger. Do you ever have any issues controlling your anger? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, isn't it true that you tried to attack Mr. Boston's girlfriend at this Chuck E. Cheese? Objection no. relevant. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll move You on. can pull the security camera and you can see everything. Okay. Um, All right. I don't have anything further at this time for Ms. Pence. All right. Anything else from the state? Um, no, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Um, May I? Excuse me. Yes, sir. Oh, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, Judge. I was just waiting for a chance to make some argument. Okay. The, um, is the does the state have any additional witnesses um, to present? No, at this time, the state rests. All right. Does the um, defense have witnesses or evidence to present on behalf of Mr. Boston? No, Judge. We're not going to present any evidence today. Okay. All right. Um, sorry. All right. The um, All right. Let me hear argument. Judge, may I proceed? You may. So first of all, and Miss Miss Hagler can correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe she indicated that the order, the bond order, was issued in 2022. This alleged incident happened in 2020. So he can't violate a bond that has not been set. So that, that's the first part of the argument. Um, and I would, if, if I got that wrong, I would ask Ms. Hagler to correct. I will make my argument when it's time for me to make my sure. argument. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, secondly, Judge. Um, Mr. Boston has announced ready for trial on both the alleged incident, the criminal trespass, and on the battery case. And he strongly contests the allegations of Ms. Benz. Um, I would have him testify today, but in order to do that, we would have to 
um, let our trial strategy go, we would also have to have him give up his right against self-incrimination. And we don't feel that <clears throat> that's necessary at point. However, um, Judge, from the testimony of Ms. Benz, it's pretty apparent that she voluntarily had contact with Mr. Boston at the Chuck E. Cheese's, number one. Number two, um, it's our position that, well, um, <clears throat> so it's our position he did not violate any bond by having contact with Ms. Benz because Ms. Benz came to where he was. We're going to contest and we're going to present evidence at the trial that <clears throat> that she found out about the Chuck E. Cheese on the day. Okay, but if that's evidence you're not willing to present here, you can't argue it here. Is that sure, Judge? Um, so I would also like to point out that Mr. Boston announced ready um, for the criminal trespass case, which there is no allegation of any physical contact. Um, not in the statement that was given to police. Um, and now, inconsistent with that, Ms. Benz says that there is. There have been multiple inconsistencies in her testimony, and Your Honor can use that to determine her credibility. Ultimately, a jury is the most appropriate fact finder to determine what happened in this case. I would like to point out that this motion to revoke bond was filed September 4th, 2020, the very same day when the state found out or that when the, I announced to the state that we would not be entering pleas to either of these cases because we contest the allegations. You Ms. mean 2024? Sorry, 2024. So okay. full, approximately four years after the alleged bond violation. Um, Mr. Boston has been in court um, for every appearance. Mr. Boston is not running away from these charges. Mr. Boston looks forward to his day in court where a jury can evaluate the credibility of the claims um, with regard to the criminal trespass case and with regard to the um, allegation of uh, battery family violence. Um, Mr. Boston works full time as an, <clears throat> an electrician. Mr. Boston um, does not have an extensive criminal history. Um, so judge, even if you were to find that there had been a bond violation. The only locking Mr. Boston up um, pre-trial is not the only action the court can take. So number one, we would argue that that has not been proven by a preponderance of the evidence. But number two, even if you believe that it has been, we would ask that you allow Mr. Boston to have his day in court. Um, there would be no bond to violate if I had not gotten sick on the court date. Um, for the criminal trespass case. And I would ask you not to hold that against Mr. Boston either. He is, he is aware of the bond conditions. He is not violating the bond conditions. He is willing to <clears throat> um, abide by any additional stipulations the court were to um, suggest in this case. But overall judge, um, based on what has been presented to this court, um, it has not been established that he violated his bond conditions. And, and again, even if it has judged, we would ask that you wait until he has his day in court. And then if he's convicted, then your honor obviously will have the ability to sentence him under the law. Okay. All right, Ms. Taylor. Thank you, Judge. Um, the state would ask that you do violate the defendant's, I'm sorry, revoke the defendant's bond um, until his trial um, for clarity purposes. Um, the order for bond that I did read out, yes, it was signed on May 13th of 2022, but on the bond order, it does have the criminal trespass damage to property case on there, um, warrant number 2020 CW52107. Um, and it also has the, um, the, the battery case that we're here today on as well. Um, again, the warrant number is 2020 CWC 1250. So both cases, the one that's currently on the calendar and the case that he's being revoked for are on this 
one bond order. Um, based on the testimony that we heard, uh, we did hear from Officer um, Green, who did testify that on November 9th of 2020, um, he did respond to um, the incident location regarding um, battery family violence. Um, he did indicate that he did see um, visible um, injuries um, on the, um, I'm sorry, he did indicate that he did see visible injuries on the defendant while at the Chuck E. Cheese. Um, he did determine the defendant to be the primary aggressor. Uh, we also heard from Ms. Benz herself, who um, gave the same testimony that, you know, the defendant did push her on that day while at Chuck E. Cheese and that she did sustain visible injuries. Uh, we also heard that um, there was a previous incident that again occurred on May 7th of 2020 in which the defendant did um, uh, destroy her her spiritual, her, her, her prayer room, her igun. Um, he did put holes in the walls. Um, and so, Your Honor, again, the order did say that he is to stay away from the defendant, I mean, from the victim, Ms. Cassie Benz, and to not violate any laws. Um, the reason why this motion book was not filed early is because I wasn't here one, two, three years ago. I was I got here in July of this year. Um, so that is why it is just not being brought to the court's attention now. And so for those reasons, um, testimony of Ms. Benz and testimony of Officer Green, um, we, we would ask that you revoke the defendant's bond until trial. Thank you. Okay, so let me ask a clarifying question, Ms. Hagler. So you said that, so this is how I know magistrate to work, but it's been, I think I haven't been on magistrate court in nine years, almost 10 years. Things may have changed. But a gen generally, when a warrant is issued, if the person is arrested pursuant to that warrant, and a CW would mean that somebody, um, a, an officer came into the um, office, asked the magistrate to hear sworn testimony. The magistrate then types up the warrant. And at that point, the officer can proceed on that warrant. It is not one where um, the officer was present at the time the offense um, happened, which would have been a CA, CAA, which would, would have been a um, warrantless, I mean, a WAA, a warrantless arrest affidavit. It would have been after some investigation or after going to the scene, the officer collects information and then they go to a magistrate, ask that magistrate to produce a, a warrant. And then that warrant is, is then entered into the system and the person is wanted. My understanding from what you're telling me is that he was not initially arrested on the 2020 CW warrant. That warrant was still showing wanted when he was then subsequently arrested on the next case. And for both those cases, the um, bond condition was set to require that he have no contact with Ms. Benz. Is that correct? Yes, no contact and then not to violate any laws. So when Mr. Lynch is testifying that for the 2020 CW, um, which would have been first in time, he did not have a bond condition until he was arrested on the, that and the subsequent um, event. So he So two events were committed. He wasn't arrested on the first one. When they arrested him on the second one, they pr they processed both the CW um, and either another CW or a WAA. So one of them was in 2020. The other one was in, I think you said 2021 or 2020. Both, both were in 2020. Um, one occurred May 7th. The criminal trespass occurred, occurred May 7th of 2020. And then the battery family violence occurred November 29th of 2020. But, but he wasn't arrested on any of them until 2022. Um, that, based on this bond order, that's when it was signed. Okay, so that's what that would have meant, that he was wanted from for both of those things for almost two years. And the when he was finally arrested on those two offenses, the court then had a first appearance hearing where he was given notice that he was not to have contact with a particular person, Ms. Benz, or go to a particular location possibly. That's what appears from this warrant, I mean, from this order for bond, sorry. Okay, so, and this is where Ms. Benz is about to lose it, but Mr. Ben, Ms. Benz, let me explain to you what happened. So he had warrants that were out there, but he wasn't arrested. He wasn't arrested until later, and when he was arrested, 
then at that time, he was given notice of the bond conditions. I can't hold him responsible for bond conditions that he wa that weren't even in place at the time or he didn't have knowledge of at the time. And so even though both of those events took place one after the other, had he been arrested on the first event and given a first event, a first appearance and been told that he had bond conditions, then I would be able to hold him accountable because he is knowledgeable that these bond conditions exist and you're not to con to uh, have any other offenses and you're not to have contact with this particular person. Number that one. case y'all won't allow us to talk about in the courtroom. They told no, no. him. Miss Miss Vince, it doesn't matter whether you're allowed to talk about it or not. What I'm saying is the state of the bond conditions is until a bond condition is served upon the person and they're given notice that this is what you cannot do until that hearing is held, then they're not responsible for that. So he had two outstanding warrants. The first warrant he was never arrested on until the second warrant happened. When he came to Chuck E. Cheese, then they were able to arrest him on that second warrant, the Chuck E. Cheese incident, and the first warrant, which was outstanding. And at that time, he was given bond conditions. Now, if he committed a crime after that, after the date that he was given the bond conditions, which was May 13th of 2022, if there is a crime that occurred after May 13th of 2022 that he was arrested for, then I could hold him on a bond revocation. But because he was not given bond conditions until the date in question, and that predated Though those two offenses predated his bond conditions, I cannot hold him responsible for having violated the bond conditions. That's number one. And number two, even though there were no bond conditions in place at the time that you all agreed to meet at the um, Chuck E. Cheese, you admit that you agreed to have contact with him. What set it off was Mr. Um, Mr. I didn't uh, admit Austin, to anything. Miss Miss Benz. Let me finish what you you admitted that you agreed to have contact with Mr. Boston. What set it off was. Under under your um, your testimony is that he arrived with his girlfriend and her children who were not expected to be there. Don't and request me Ms. To come Benz, back to the courtroom. Which he arrived with his girlfriend and her children and they were not expected to be there. So at that point. That's what set off the encounter. But at that point, Mr. Benz was not under a bond condition from this court that this court can rely upon to hold him responsible. So at, with that being said and all laid out, Mr. Benz, I cannot revoke, revoke a bond condition, a bond for revocation um, where the condition was not in place at the time that the offense happened. So... That's where that stands. And thank goodness for my knowledge as a magistrate court judge, because you got to walk this down slowly. Now, other things I want to say about this case, Miss Benz, you are hot mad about what's going on in this situation, but you seem to be really, really. Because you allow my abuser Benz, to my son. You seem to be really, really focused on the girlfriend, and I understand that she's an irritating issue. I don't care too much, much about the girlfriend. I'm focused on the safety of my son. They leave him home by himself. He's calling me on his. And, but I want to clarify certain things. One, I've never had any contact with defects about this case or about the minor child. Last time Two, in the court, you I don't know anything about the minor child in this case or his situation or his whereabouts. Three, if it is an issue where the minor child is endangered, then that is an issue for the police to handle under whatever offense is appropriate at the time. Um, I have not directed Miss Benz to do anything but to speak with the um, victim witness um, at, uh, victim witness advocate in the solicitor general's office and to seek possibly a temporary protective order. I have not directed the magistrate court to do anything. I've not directed any other body to do anything in this case because I don't have that ability. 
So I am not in charge of this, the safety, welfare, or have any knowledge about where this child is. I don't have any knowledge about what the legal status of the child is, whether Mr. Boston has any right to have the child or whether he um, has been granted a temporary guardianship or conservative, anything. I don't have any of that because that is not before me. Okay. If there is something going on with this, this child, the child, the child that needs to be handled through yeah. the police or superior court, the superior court of the county where the child has resided. So if it's not handled by Superior Court, if it's not handled by the police, it is not something that is currently before me. I can't make Mr. Ben, I mean, Mr. Boston return a child because I don't have that power. And so um, just to be clear, Ms. Benz, I don't have the power to do what you're asking me to do. A Superior Court judge but, might but or the said, police might be able to arrest. But none of what has been said here and none of the cases in front of me involve a minor child. And so I'm putting that on the record. You can sue all you want to. You can rant, rave all you want to. Um, but none of that involves this court. State court does not have jurisdiction over those matters. None of what has been alleged has anything to do with a minor child being involved. And therefore, I'm um, clarifying for the record that the allegations you made against this court um, can't be supported. And so if you want to pursue the custody of the child, then, like I said, you need to go through Superior Court or you need to go through the police and have them file a warrant for whatever they deem is appropriate. But it cannot come through me because I don't have that power. So everything that you, all the power that you've given me, I don't have. Okay. So with that being said, at this time, the motion to revoke is denied. The court has put on the record all of the information that it has regarding this case and the situation that exists. And um, at this time, Mr. Benz, I will remind you that you are currently under a bond condition that says that you're not to have any contact with Miss Benz, that you're not to go to around her, that you're not to have a third party contact her. And let me be clear, I hate cases where people bring in the girlfriend. The girlfriend did not have a child with Miss Benz. And so she has no right to have any connection with Miss Benz. She didn't lay down with Miss Benz. She can't get up with Miss Benz. And so when you bring the girlfriend in as a surrogate to participate in an argument with Miss Benz or to talk to Miss Benz in any way about Miss Benz's child, that's inappropriate. You're the person who had a child with her. You need to have those conversations. Don't bring your other party around, especially when you know it's going to be a problem. That's irresponsible. So let's start thinking about mature co-parenting as opposed to um, all of this high school stuff where we, I'm going to bring my girlfriend and she's going to fight you and all that foolishness. It, it, it really is ignorant. So Ms. Benz, I've clarified my position in this. I've made my statement. I have reminded Mr. Boston that should you violate the conditions, you could be arrested until your this case is resolved. You could also be charged with additional misdemeanors or felonies punishable by up to 10 years in prison, a thousand, a $10,000 fine or both per offense. And so um, at this time, the motion is denied, um, but the Solicitor General's office per any, any information that they receive could receive, could bring that um, motion to revoke back. And let's, let me be very clear, it could be based on a third party contacting Miss Benz, namely a girlfriend or some other family member or person acting on your behalf. So please tell them that they don't help you in any way by doing that. Okay. Even if they're using an anonymous number, technology is such that things can be traced. Don't make them find it. All right. So um, that is, that concludes this case. All right. Um, serve him without an address for you to even, for me to even do the things you're telling me to do. Ms. Benz, I can't ask him for his address. I can't so compare him to give me that. Forward to get my son to even do the legal things that you're telling me to do. Ms. How Benz, am I supposed to do this? What I'm Ms. saying? Benz, let me just tell you something. Ms. Benz, if you will listen to me, let me tell you something. My mom does, she practices law in South Carolina. And this was a point she made to someone once. You have a child with somebody, you choose that person. 
If you got a child with somebody and you don't know their address, how do you think I'm going to figure it out? I don't know him. I don't know where he's lived. I don't know his people. I don't know who he is. You have way more information than I do. I can't compel him to give me his information. And I didn't have a child with him. So that's what I say. When people, we're having kids with folk that we barely know. Folk are just having kids with people that they barely know. They're having kids with people that they wouldn't even marry, but they're having kids with them. And then you expect the courts to enforce a relationship that you don't even have. So I'm not going to take that abuse because she failed to have a child with the right person or to get the right information. I'm not doing that. Y'all need to be more careful about who you procreate with. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm serious about that. Children being brought into this world um, in the midst of foolishness and the foolishness just continues. And the only people who suffer are the kids. So Miss Benz can have whatever tantrum she wishes to have, but I have made my ruling and I have put it on the record. All right. So um, next one o'clock calendar. Your Honor, before you move to the one o'clock, I do have an announcement for the motion to seal for Washington for these two cases whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Um, the first case after review, um, the state doesn't have any issue with that one to, to, um, to seal. However, the second case, um, the state should, the state will ask that you deny that motion. All right. So in Washington, Ms. Powell, the motion um, will be granted as to the first case. The second case involving the battery, is that correct? Y yes, Your Honor, because that will be denied. The second case will be denied. All mm -hmm. right, Ms. Powell, did you need anything else? I don't think so. First case approved. Second case uh -huh. battery is denied. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Excuse me, uh, Judge. Yes. It's Sergeant Williams. Yes, I Sergeant. Was, um, I was here for Parks Dion. I need to know if I'm still needed. Yes, ma'am, because I haven't even done the one o'clock calendar, and I'm gonna assume that since it's not ringing a bell, that's the one o'clock. I'm gonna sign. I'm gonna call that right now. Um, hold on a second, uh, Miss Brenda. I'm trying to sign this uh, order that you sent me because I know they're they're waiting. Um, see but uh, I put my phone number on here for DDS uh, okay so I'm sending it back um if you need to add my name printed you can go ahead and do that Miss Brenda I can't figure out how to make it work with um, my keyboard not acting right all right, so um, on the one o'clock calendar, um, All right, so on the motions calendar um, for 1 p.m., the first case on the calendar.